e te iwi no mai hari mai ki tenei apahotanga a whakata Māori tēnā koutou katoa. Welcome to Wellington, to the Wellington Regional Aquatic Centre. Looking forward to this one. It's been a big term, it's been a big season, and we're now down to two to decide New Zealand Secondary School Girls Water Polo Supremacy. It is the Mike of St Cuthbert's, the defending champion up against the Rising Stars, Baradine. It's an all Auckland final, and we're moments away from bringing you all of the action. But first up, it's the team introductions. times this year, Berardine and St. Cuffs. Uh, St. Cuffs has hit the middle. They're the ones going for the under season. They won the national final. Berardine, well, this is their third chance in the final of knocking off St. Cuffs. Uh, they lost in the final final and the national final. Uh, but this is the one that we really did. It's going to be a really good opportunity. Um... Got the sign in my way. Thank you. 
think the cost if you watch for both of these sides. The first in the final, Berenin, they did have made it to start. So, a big opportunity for him to head up to pass. As you may have heard Mark say earlier, four quarters, six minutes each. Both teams get two timeouts. Uh, exclusions, you can have three of those before you're done for the day. To recap, uh, Rangi Toto, arguably upsetting Diocesan School for Girls, their first win of the Kinsem this year to take the bronze medal in their sixth attempt at beating Dio this year. They finally got it done uh, to take the bronze. So almost set to go to find out who will be our 2024 National Secondary School Girls Champions. Yeah, so looking forward to this one. I mean, really, it's in Cuthbert's probably to lose, but what really Baradine need to do is try and get up early, try and put just a little bit of doubt in St Cuthbert's head. They're not used to losing. And let's see how they deal with a bit of adversity. We saw a similar situation a few years ago where Rangitoto did it to diocesan. It's 10-3 yesterday when the two teams met. You know, so, um, you know, Baradine will have, to, will have to improve on that. Well, looking for that quick entry pass for Baradine. Well read, though, on defence there by St Cuthbert's Katie Marshall. But still in possession, uh, Baradine. And they'll come back through Kiara Evans. And yeah, for so long, it's always been really the three schools, hasn't it? It's been Rangitoto, it's been St Cuthbert's, but it's been Dio. And now we're starting to see Baradine come through. And now it will be the first opportunity for St Cuthbert's. They'll come away through Katie Marshall in the number 10 cap. Marshall Milley goes out to Emerson Styrus, wonderful player Styrus. Father Scott, of course, played cricket for New Zealand. Yeah, just wide. Louise Beaumont credited with the save there, two metre, so... Although she looks a little bit confused, maybe she, maybe she thinks she didn't touch it, but I'm sure she'll take the save anyway. OK, so some cuff bits through Bella Knight. We'll get play back underway. An exclusion already, so now six on five here. The way of St Cuthbert, so immediately Baradine on the back foot a little bit. Happy to be patient as St Cuthbert. A little pump fake and the big shot comes and, well, just too much room, too much time. And just like that, the defending champions go up by one. Really big power shot there coming from Holly Dunn. Just took in, in, in that preview, Holly Dunn, exceptional play. You cannot give her that much time. If you give her that much time, she will score it. Part of me wants to say 10 times out of 10 because she doesn't really miss from there. So tall, so long, yeah. on her legs, great finish. And also Isabella Lambie in the number two, another one that's really tall, big physical stature. As we now see Emily Leiden trying to get Barrett in, moving forward, but no real power on the shot. Good defence again, and Bianca Pennington. First time we've seen her with the ball, bringing the ball forward. Out to her right in the number 10 cap is Katie Marshall. Out there in the number six cap, Holly Dunn. So she's got Marshall and Dunn. She decides to go to Dunn. Marshall pushes forward. So Pennington. Double team her, but that just opens it up somewhere else. Looks for the little entry pass down the middle. Can't quite find it. Turnover. Good defence here. Coming from Baradine. Exclusion coming. Turnover. Foul. Turnover. Wow. That is good from St Cuthbert's. Got to keep an eye on Katie Marshall, very, very intelligent player. It's all a little bit, a little bit scrappy here at the moment. Both teams a little bit nervous. I think exclusion called. Yeah, number ten excluded for Baradine is Venetia Hickey. So six on five opportunity here again. So we just sit back in more of a zone. I just wonder whether they need to press. Go man on man. There's too much height. Get away with it this time, Baradine. Good creativity find Holly down on the post. You can see she was being held as she tries to get out of the water and she maintains her strength. But a nice save from yeah. Louise Beaumont, asserting herself in this game early. Yeah, you've got to bring players in too, don't they? They've got to get Tallulah Goldsworthy into this game. Yeah, absolutely. Phil Baradine, number 12. She had an incredible semi final last night, and here's her first chance. Chance goes here. We talked about her, and Goldsworthy does get it done. And just like that, we're tied up at one. So. Big goal, big moment. Got to believe. Do they believe? That's really, really key for Baradine to try and get that opportunity, get get in this game early. 
put some pressure on St. Cuffs. They haven't been challenged that much this year. Yeah, nice goal there and not a lot that Bella Knight for St. Cuthbert's could do other than sit back and watch and admire. So Emerson Styrus, really good talent representing New Zealand too. Oh, good play here. But just desperation defence being shown by Taylor Fisher for Baradine. But the exclusion comes, does it? Explosion on Taylor Fisher, too yep. far away. He's a key player, Barrett in that's his oh, second foul. I still foul. don't think she had a choice, though. No. Got to, got to go high, got to be physical, got to press. Again, good defence that time from Goldsworthy. Really looking to try and work over Bianca Pennington for St Cuthbert's. Pennington here in position now. Pennington with the shot, too easy, though. Picked up nicely by Beaumont. So Beaumont has got to rise in early. It's a good start for Baradine. They've you know, been under the pump a little bit. A couple of exclusions on Taylor Fisher. You know, one on Gemma Robertson, but they're managing to weather the storm. Get their 6-5 defence sorted. <laughs> Tallulah's doing a good job at Baradine there at the centre, creating, posting up. They just need someone now on that outside to step up. Really want to score the goal for them from the outside. Now switching play and going quickly, looking for a big drive here. Now some cuff bits, another big shot, inaccurate though. Emerson Styrus that time, the goal shooter, couldn't quite get it done. So this is what they've got to do, continue to just frustrate some cuff bits, Baradine. Hang in here, frustrate them. Absolutely. And they're doing a good job of it at the moment. But they've got to take their opportunities offensively as well. So pick up the minor foul. Bella Knight's turning around going, who, me? And the number three cap, big long shot. Almost catches Izzy Fenton off guard, but not quite. So Holly Dunn here. Such a, composed, such a composed player, Holly. Controls the game so well from that left wing, or that right wing, which is left-handed. Oh, oh, I think two St Cuthbert's at times might just, you know, sometimes you've got to earn the right, don't you? So they're being yep. frustrated at the moment. Don't shift too far away from the game plan, and that was a really good example of it. So suddenly it is St Cuthbert's who go up by two. We'll go back and just have a look at the replay here, Hamish. Great work finish from Katie Marshall, posting up there. Getting on her legs as that ball arrives. You can feel Emily Light and grab her and pull her back, but she works hard. She could let the ball go, probably an exclusion, but she fights for it at the time, gets up and finishes. Turnover foul called, so really key minute to go in this first quarter. Baradine will want to make sure they don't let St. Cuffs get another one. Yep. Trying to stay with them early. Yep, Styrus. Been in this team for a couple of years now. This is their third season. St. Cuthbert's in this top team. Knows what it's like to win a national champion. Did it last year and somehow they find another way through. This time Bianca Peddington. Well, that was really turned something really out of nothing. Didn't have a lot of room here. Fights, fights, fights. Makes that half turn. As she gets the ball, uses her legs, and then just finds that angle. Yeah, it's almost like for a moment there, Louise Beaumont just you almost felt that her defend that here. Shot. I think she felt her defenders had done the job, and they hadn't quite. It was just a little bit off guard. And just want to talk about just cannot lose your concentration for a moment, particularly against a team like St. Cuthbert's. There's a chance. Vanessa Hickey earns an exclusion on yeah. Katie Marshall. Yeah, she's got that physical thing. Yeah, they need to take their chances quickly but automatically being pushed back, having to play around the perimeter. Can they get the little entry pass in? Shot clock's coming. Shot clock pressure. Oh, it does have a shot, and just like that, scores. Wow, lovely little feint. Looked like she was going to go out to the left there. Initially looked like she was going to take the shot. Then she decided not to. You just have a look here. He's just put that little bit of doubt on those defenders' head. Just use that there, that little look to the left, <laughs> and then just went straight down Broadway. Superb piece of play from Venetia Hickey. You can see Holly Dunn. She stepped, she, she sold her. But oh, here's a big chance for St. Cuffs. Oh, penalty. Exclusion only. Exclusion only. Probably. So, I get to get away with that one, Baradine. Zoe Knight, the player in possession of the ball then, who was fouled, and now looking to come across. Got to shut them out here. Got to stop St. Cuthbert from scoring here. Good, big, large field block coming from number five. And that was Billy Shuler. 
Now, is Billy Shuler part of the Shuler clan? No, different. Not as far as I'm aware. Not part of the Tauranga dynasty? No. Different, different Shuler clan. There may be some relation, not that I'm aware of. So he just had Ethan Mikulski come across and another very good goalkeeper in his own right out of Rosmini. Ninth in this championship for yeah, Rosmini. Matthew Mihalovic, another member of that team. Did a great job in coaching at North Harbour and also in the sport of surf lifesaving with the Murumai Club. So lovely to have those two fine young men down here. I've got to say, that's the other thing that impresses you, isn't it? The maturity and the behaviour of these young athletes and uh, really a credit to their school. And as we just see this end of that first quarter, our two officials. Emma Wilson, New Zealand Water Polo's Referee of the Year last year. Um, that was awarded a couple of weekends ago at the, uh, the New Zealand Water Polo Awards. And Kian Rakelis is um, a Kiwi boy, St Peter's College educated, but he's been plying his trade over in Brisbane recently. Made his debut in the Australian National League um, this year, but has returned home for, for these championships for, for that reason, to referee. Um, so... Good to have both of those two down here from Auckland and Brisbane. So hopefully. St Peter's of Cambridge or St Peter's of Auckland? St Peter's of Auckland. Yeah, very good. Had a very, very good Māori Cup this year. Pushed Hamilton boys to whole weight. Big, big, very good sporting school considering their size and always been that so-called poor cousin of the might of Auckland Grammar School. It does not surprise me they continue to produce athletes right across the board. Worth mentioning here while we're, while we're at a break here that um, Melbourne Girls, St Margaret's College, they'll play for the Division 2 gold. Um, in about 20 minutes in Hamilton. Um, so, St Marg, the South Island champions, Melbourne Girls bronze at the South Island Secondary Schools champ. So, congratulations to those two teams on, on making yep. that gold medal match. O on the boys' man, Albert Grammar School, or my old school, I think it was somewhere in the Division 2, too. They were somewhere, okay? yeah. Okay, getting back underway, second quarter, New Zealand Secondary Schools girls final four on six. So, for St Cuthbert's, so it was Maddie Hayes. So Berardines currently have a player in the exclusion box hanging over from that last quarter. Chance here now. I'd love to just get this goal early. Oh, really good block too. Field block, I think. Just took a bit of the pace off it, but getting across nicely to this Louise Beaumont. Really just taken off guard on one occasion. She's been superb. So they now look to come down this right-hand side. Really good high-press defence coming here, though, from St Cuthbert's. Number eight. Is Kiera Evans. Work by Ryan Bryant on her legs. Lob shot, oh. just misses. Yeah, it's always that little reminder too, always making sure you're following up because you just never know when it's going to come off that crossbar. And chance here, so Styrus goes back across to Holly Dunn. Dunn with a big cannon shot. Bounces off the surface, and now another opportunity. Too good, too simple. We talked about the follow-up, didn't we? I just mentioned it at the <laughs> other end, the and rebounds. there was Zoe Knight just coming on that rebound, just following up off the crossbar here. And who's there? But Zoe Knight. Stays composed, waits for Louise to drop her hands, and then bang, right past her. So four twos and Cuthbert's and the Cuthbert's. Trying to defend the title they won last year. That was a close final against Diocesan. But again, just look here. Zoe Knight just all over Tallulah Goldsworthy. Now the shot clock pressure goes on. Entry pass. Turnover. Good defence from Hamilton. Number three there, Bella Knight for St Cuthbert's. Oh, oh, entry pass, so really nicely done. We've talked about it on team sports, don't we? You pass into space, you move into space, the two come together, and that's exactly what you got. Holly done, brilliant. There's so much space and time. Holly works really hard to get that inside water. She's had a, she's had a hand in almost every single goal there. It's yeah, great. really good pass there from Bianca Pennington. Great vision from Pennington, but you've got to have the vision, but you've also got to have that understanding, and that was just... Yeah, almost just wonderful intuition between the two. Yeah, absolutely. So, ball taken under the water by Katie Marshall. I'm just getting just just this high press, isn't it? It's just pushing. It's been very effective. Oh. 
the element of surprise. That's what I love in the sport. Don't blink, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to tell you, the number of times I've been caught out as a commentator. So the goal's just come from nowhere. It is fast, it is furious. You've got to have a head like granite. And a big set of lungs. Stylus. Turnover called. Interesting for St. Cuts here today, you know, having having that weight of expectation. Undefeated season, you know, no one's really pushed them too hard. Dio did once earlier in the year. Um, but how do you manage that expectation through this final? Yeah, well, that's it. And, the, and I said some of these, you know, athletes might be physically mature and stuff, but, you know, they're still, some of them are still very, very young. Some of them are basically still kids, and you've got to deal with that mental side of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and you say, oh, yeah, well, how much is in that? You go, well, hang on, at an elite level, we actually have an industry called sports psychologists, so it does play a big part. And that's how you get the better teams, but it's just too easy at the moment for St Cuthbert's. You just feel that they've maybe just broken the back here of... Paradine, Holly Dunn Paradine. again gets that space on her legs, bang, great finish near corner. And just couldn't quite get across, could she, Phoenicia Hickey? And you could just see the frustration on her face. And now 6 2, Baradine really do need to score, and they need to score quickly. Got to find a way. They've scored two, so go back to the model. But just this aggressive high press coming from Hamilton, uh, coming from St Cuthbert's. And with some Styrus this time. And that is pressure. Trying to correct things now. Gemma Robertson. She looks for an entry pass. Clock shot, clock pressure comes. The shot does come. Looks to lob it off the top of the crossbar. And we talked about it. And I'll argue that at the moment, some Cuthbert's are winning it through defence as much as they are through attack. Yeah, they're really cutting down that space and time that Berardine have. They're playing a high press. The centre forwards, they're on five metres. They're making, it's making life very difficult for them. Another opportunity. The intended receiver was Mia Callagher. And you see the depth of the bench that St Cuthbert's have too. You talk yeah, about it, the rolling subs. It's a really deep squad. You know, they, they can you know they can play player in, player out and not lose a lot. You know, they've got their starters, but they also have a group that come off their bench and add a lot of value and impact. No oh, chance now. Got to take it. Oh, well done too. So that is the goal they so desperately needed, 6-3. And if they can hit them again with less than two minutes remaining in the second quarter, it is game on heading into the second half. So three-goal buffer. I love that from Kerry Evans. Fake, fake, fake. You see three St. Cuss players draw to her. She stays on her legs, elevated, finds Emily Leiden, who shoots off the hand without faking it. No chance for Izzy Fender to slide that far that quickly and scores the goal. Yeah, no, wonderful... Um, you gain endurance, that egg beater kick, just how hard is that? And just the number of matches you do burn in terms of energy and being able to stay that high and continue that control and continue to fake. And now they turn it over. So a little bit of momentum shift here going back the way now of Baradine. They'll look to come back through Gemma Robertson. Robertson goes down, finds Kiera Evans. All over here is Isabel Lambie for St Cuthbert's in the number two cap. And go across, find Taylor Fisher. Post up on the far side to Lula Goldsworthy. Rian Bryant working hard to get position. And turnover. Good defence again. Holly Dunn will get things back underway. What was the ruling there? So they've, agreed, they've, they've decided that uh, Goldsworthy was holding as the ball came into the centre. The funny thing is, they're all holding the whole time. <laughs> they're all holding, and yeah. it's just it's just about body position, yeah. Um, and and who can it, show where. And, 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 and it's about selling it, isn't it? It is. You know, and there is a degree of you, you've got to be one of the great poker players, or you've got to be a little bit of a con artist, and I mean that in a truly a sporting way. It is a little bit of theatre, convincing the referees that there is skull luggery going on, when perhaps there's not. Absolutely. And now, good defence here this time, from. Baradine and they turn that position over nice and really well done by Tallulah Goldsworthy. She is a very, very busy player. 
A lot of mates in these teams, but a lot of the girls out of the Seawolf, Atlantis and Maris clubs. So plenty, plenty of friendships across both sides as they go at each other. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the sp true secondary school sports where the club stuff is as important as the school stuff, and there mm. is room for both. Mm. And if you're not necessarily at a strong school, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be identified. You can't not make national teams because you can do it at a club level as well, which I do like about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think sometimes, you know, players and say other sports, well, if you've got a good team around you, it's easy for you to stand out, isn't it? Absolutely. Same player at a school where perhaps is not quite as depth is going to find it a lot harder. As we just continue to see St Cuthbert's happy to be patient. Three goal buffer. Just five seconds remain. Can they score here? Oh, good defence, and that'll bring that quarter to a close. Well done, Goldsworthy again. How good has she been? And that is half time. St Cuthbert's leading the defending champions over Barradine. By six goals to three. Barrett and will take some, take some heart out of that quarter because I thought there for a minute it was all going St. Cuff's way. As you said, it was 10-3 yesterday when they played. It was quite a big margin for St. Cuff's and we were starting to get towards that again. But then all of a sudden, Barrett and just in the last couple of minutes made a couple of adjustments. They're slowing, they're, they're slowing St. Cuff's ball down. They've created the goal through Emily Leiden. And they're starting to get within, a, you know, get within that two or three goal buffer. You know, it's all it is now is a quick goal and then a mistake from St. Cuff, they come down and score on the other end and suddenly we're game on. Yep. So, they're yeah, staying within striking distance. Looks like for St. Cuff, I can see here, sorry, you, can't, you might be able to see at the top of your screen, Olivia Shine, the St. Cuff's goalie, a uh, second goalie, appears to be warming up. So, again, a bit of depth there. They've got two goalies who can, who can both play. So, Olivia Shine, number 13. Yeah, I've got to say, um, coach is looking fairly relaxed there, and Ollie Gribb and Ollie Gibb and Ben Gardner. You know, Ollie's been here, done that before. He knows, you know, they've been doing this all year. They, you know, it's it's a sign of a good program, and it's a sign of a good team that he's that he he is relaxed. Now, of course, it's easy to be relaxed when you've got a six-three lead at halftime in the national final, but. Those the team knows their systems. They've got a great pool, you know, and they've got a great program at St. Cuffs. Um, they continue to develop really good athletes, and I think, you know, they've got trust in their systems at the moment, and they know that if they keep sticking at that, that's going to work. Faradine, on the other hand, you know, for them, I think the message from Jordan has to be you've got nothing to lose. You go out here. If you're going to go out, go out swinging, because, you know, you haven't got over St. Cuffs this year yet. You've done a great job okay. in the middle, you know. But, I mean, it's all very well to say go out swinging. How does, what does that look like? I think they've just got to take some chances. They've got to, you know, they've got to make sure they're really high in the lane and their defence, they're putting pressure on. They may start to leave early, so they may give up some extra shots by putting someone to the other end. Okay, it's probably not quite time for that yet, but another goal is in cuffs, and that's probably where, where you're at. You have to start making those decisions and taking those risks to try and, it may mean you lose the final by more, but it may mean that you actually get back into it too. Hope you are enjoying coverage here of this New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo Final. Senior girls between the defending champions St Cuthbert's of Auckland and Baradine of Auckland. Pinakoto Katoa. Ita iwi no mai hari mai ki tenei papahotanga a whakata Māori across Māori television. Neutral throw called by referee Sim. Well, so this should be a good scrap, shouldn't it? Yeah, so they'll just toss it up in the air. Down a little bit of basketball. Yep. Styrus then gets play back underway. It was the first receiver, and they go immediately across to their playmaker, Katie Marshall, in the number 10. And Marshall now starts to drive forward as Styrus finds Bianca Pennington. And then just a bit of a wayward pass, and it'll be a turnover, and it'll be Goldsworthy again. Good player, Goldsworthy. Great players just have time, don't they? Under all Absolutely. sorts of pr pressure and duress. And now Emily Leiden starting to get physical. Really good high press defence coming here from St Cuthbert's. They want to just try and stifle any momentum that Baradina is searching for. Got a shot clock pressure. So Olivia Shine is in for St Cuthbert's in goal. Taylor Fisher 
you know, I think set out that second quarter because she was on two major fouls. She's back into Baradine. She's a key player, so see if she can make an impact. Styrus. Good, good field block. block. Yep. Really good. Well done to Rian Bryant for Baradine. Gemma, called. Yeah, Gemma Roberts and the player excluded. And now chance here, Styrus. Happy to play the perimeter. Happy to work it. Bianca Pennington go around the bases. Over the top though, wasted opportunity. For St Cuthbert's. Red flag in the air, so Jim Robertson, that's her third major foul of the afternoon, so she'll play no further part today. Physical. Position still goes the way though of Baradine. And they'll get play back underway through Taylor Fisher. Looking to try and manhandle her, get all over with Bianca Pennington. Now the shot clock count comes. Still more whistles though. Explosion foul, so here's a big chance for Baradine. Timeout being called, has it? Timeout by Jordan. And if it's for Skinny, I think it's a good timeout. 6-3 uh, down. Extra player opportunity. She gets a chance here. You know, that'll be, you know, three goals in a row for... Or, yeah, three goals in a row for Baradina if they can score this one. It really starts to edge into that lead and get into nervous territory for St. Cuth. So she'll take this time to, to get the player she wants in the pool and in the position she wants to go through a well-rehearsed 6-5 move. Yeah, big moment, big moment. Got to somehow look to shift momentum. Will this be the moment? Going to be hard. Such a wonderful team, St. Cuffs. Talking to a number of people prior to this final, they said, look, it's really just St. Cuffs to lose. They are just that much better than everyone else. And I think when you look at this with four minutes to go, I think people might be surprised at just how close Baradine have kept this and the more they can keep it close. The more they can rattle the cage, they do have a chance. That's all you need, right? All you need is a chance. Yeah, Emily Lydon get played back underway for Baradine. Bit of a wayward pass, though. Can't be making those mistakes with the six-on-five opportunity. And now they're getting the thing. Goldsworthy, big, big shot does come. Big Cannon gets a big mitt to it, though. Really good save from Olivia Shine. They'll come back, though. They'll have that corner. Another opportunity here for Baradine. Oh, a little lob shot. Almost get away with it too. Coming off the top of the crossbar. What's the ruling here, Hamish? Uh, it's a minor foul call, so but they're just going to take that side out of that restricted area, out of that two meter area. Got plenty of possession, haven't been able to turn it into points though. Oh. Good defense there from from St. Cass, they've got two back on goals where they pressed everyone else, not a lot. Lucy O'Reilly could do with that. Now looking to just drive forward chance here. Styrus with the big cannon off the crossbar. And picked up in the finish on the rebound from Rian Bryant for Baradine. Goal or no goal, it's a really nice counter-attack from St. Cass. Down the right side of the pool with, Luke, with Holly Dunn. Finds a crossbar to Emerson Styrus. Not quite there on the finish, but really nice play generally. So Lucy O'Reilly in possession for Baradine. Oh, goes across, not sure that was the right pass because Bianca Pennington, Holly Dunn, two players there. And now looking to drive forward too. And the number 10, that's Katie Marshall. Yeah, maybe just been a little impatient. Yeah, just a few things from St. Gars, a couple of uncharacteristic rushes. I think that, you know, they are, they're still playing well, they've still got a good lead. But a few things that I haven't seen this tournament so far starting to creep into them. Yeah, and that's where, though, that's where Baradine have to capitalise, though. They've got to score. They've got to put yeah. scoreboard pressure on. They've got to just put a little bit more doubt in St. Cal's head. Is this the chance? Is this the moment? They're showing they're capable. Another exclusion. Emerson Styrus picks one up for St. Cal's. So big chance for Baradine here. 
Oh, shot clock pressure too. They get the rebound, they get it back. Now they'll have another shot. Go across the far side, need to score. 6-3. They trail. Now looking to do it as Goldsworthy. Does she take control? Little lob shot off the crossbar again. So just not quite getting the trajectory right. Certainly the intent's the right intent. Been a popular item today, that crossbar. From both it has, teams. both teams, yeah. Just see how tough the sport is aerobically. Heart rates are high. Number six, Holly Dunn. And both defences very good at the moment. So both teams pressing high. Nice save from Louise Beaumont. Nice patience from Katie Marshall there before she took that shot. Nothing to rush. They've got that lead. They're trying to consolidate, but... Well, just over a minute remaining in this third quarter. And who will be crowned national champion? There will be some cuffs for the second year in a row. So Bianca Pennington looking to try and drive up through the lane. Out to her right is Mia Callagher in the number 12 cap across here on the right-hand side. Number six is Holly Dunn. Decides to have a shot herself, but nice little field block there from Taylor Fisher. Also again from Louise Beaumont. It's a really key sequence here, these 52 seconds for Berardine's chances today. They've got to try and keep some cuts out here. Styrus, entry pass, well worked, big shot, great save. Well done, Louise Beaumont. He took one in the face, though. So, situation here. How long do they give the player? Three minutes. So, Louise has got three minutes um, before... She has to make a decision. If she subs out, so if she can make it to the side of the pool and go through the normal re, re, you know, re-entry process, then she can then she can re-enter later if she's feeling better, if she's not got such a stinger. Um, but if she were to jump out behind the goal, for example, she'd have to be back in after mm. three minutes. But doesn't look great. It looked like she's had a pretty heavy one. Holly's got a good arm and, and really nice sportsmanship to see Holly Dunn over there yeah. escort, helping uh, her out. Yeah, I was going to say, I was very impressed by Holly Dunn from St Cuthbert's getting across there. We say how physical and gladiatorial this can be, but they have this wonderful ability to put that to one side. As you mentioned, they're club mates. They know each other pretty well. I guess these days too, with social media and the way you can keep in touch, your friends are not just the students you go to school with exactly it's across a whole lot of different schools now i noticed that with my own kids when we went to school once you went to your school it was it pretty much and yeah absolutely you made a new set of friends and you stuck with them yeah absolutely so um charlotte patterson gets the chance now for, for berardine in this in this final and a tough in goal But I just wonder too whether there's just this little delay might well, interesting to see which team this benefits. Sometimes just slowing things down, shifting can also be a momentum shifter. A little bit of delay. Yeah, obviously our thoughts with Louise Beaumont. You know, hopefully, hopefully she's okay. So Taylor Fisher goes across to Emily Lydon. Lydon getting worked over, and worked over by Zoe Knight. In fact. Bianca Pennington. Exclusion called. Here's a chance, Berardine. Now, they need to take it, though. They do need to take it. The door is open. They had a player free across the far side. Couldn't quite find her. They find her now. No, they don't. Looking to still shift play. Good defence here from St Cuthbert. Shot comes, but just getting in the way there. I think it was Mia Callagher for St Cuthbert. Just took a bit of the sting off it. Now the counter-attack at the other end through, so through Styrus. Styrus is the one-on-one -on -one situation. Penalty. That's huge. Six on five for, for Berardine to get it to 6-4. Emerson Styrus with five seconds left on the clock in this quarter. Works her way down the pool. Makes a turn. Earns a penalty. And coming forward to take that penalty will be Holly Dunn. Good left-hander. Big first assignment for Charlotte Patterson, trying to save a penalty from Holly Dunn. And just come off and just make go to one side, don't you? Well, I almost did too, but Holly Dunn. Left-handers, how important are they in water polo? How rare are they? 
not, they're not they're not super rare, but you know, you, you, you typically I reckon you typically see one or two a team. You know, you'd try you to do. Have, in fact, you know, I've never seen a sport with so many left-handers. Yeah, and, and they're really really important on that on the what we would call the right wing because they control it. They can catch the ball. So when we do when we players are passing and you're passing and training, there's two sort of normal ways to call it: your strong side or your cross face. So. You're catching strong side, you're catching from the ball coming towards your shooting arm, or your, your right or your left hand, depending on what you prefer. Whereas cross face, you've got to catch the ball from one side of your face and bring it across to the other. Mm. Right? Left handers, they don't have to do that on that right side. They can control the game it, from down it, there. Yeah, it's just another dynamic, isn't it? Your you defence have got to think about that, again, offensively, it just gives you more options. So that's a big goal, that last one for Baradine. Uh, sorry, for St. Cuthbert, so take, take it out to 7 3 at three quarter time. Um, really good quarter by Berardine though I think you can't you know you can't underestimate the effort they put in there yep the goals didn't come but if they keep playing like that they score two quick goals you know it's a big four goals is a big like, big ask in the last quarter but it's not unheard of no it's not and they've just got to come out as you said they've got nothing to lose here they've got to just try and find some way of freedom but then equally look you do just sense that I mean St Cuthbert's are just going to want to shut this down, aren't they? They're just going to shut this down. They're going to be niggly. They're going to want to try and slow it down. We've got the Tauranga boys college getting ready in front of us for that secondary school boys final. Never won it. Looking to try and create history. And come up against the defending champion Sacred Heart. That is to follow this. But it is St Cuthbert's who are six minutes away from defending the title they won last year in Christchurch. And establishing himself as the premier water polo school, which I think really for the decade prior has probably been owned by diocesan. Yeah, it has been. Dio, you know, won a, a multitude of national titles in the last couple of years. Um, obviously, St. Cuff last year, being a total the year before that, so it's been a couple of years. Um, but, you know, St. Cuff have been the dominant team in the last two years. Um, but they've got, a, they've got a big crop of year 13s this year, so. It'll be interesting to see as we as we head to the 25 season. Um, who will be there, but they've still got work to do to make sure they win the 24 season first. Six minutes remains, and Cuthbert's lead 7-3 over Baradine. They come away with the ball. Katie Marshall looks to bring it forward. Goes immediately, finds Styrus. Such a key member of this team now, Styrus. Holly Dunn getting really worked over nicely there by Kira Evans for Baradine. Now chance comes and just like that they extend it out to 8-3 and now well for Baradine do they believe how much damage was done prior to the start of this quarter and now in the first 30 seconds of this last quarter really really nice interplay there between Holly Dunn, Isabel Lambie and Lambie gets the job done Really nice defense from, from St. Cuffs, pushing those center forwards out for a couple of meters. Makes it harder when the center forwards at five meters, your offensive players. Oh, here's another chance. Yeah, too easy now, isn't it? And Styrus this time, the goal scorer. Just cracked them open now. A couple in a row. It's a really nice outlet pass from Olivia Shine. Holly Dunn, great pass to the hand of Emerson Styrus. A good finish. Yeah, <clears throat> do have to feel sometimes for Olivia Shine. Can't do much there in goal. And now it's about damage control, you feel, for Baradine. There's no way back here with five minutes to go. And again, it's really good defence that time from Bella Knight. How good was Bella Knight then? been a really complete performance from the St. Cuff's team across the board. You've, yeah. seen, you've seen a couple of players do some really good things, but you can't, everyone's contributing. Well, there was a, there, there was a period there where Baradine had a little bit of momentum, but they just, yeah, they just stuck to their, just stuck to their shape and didn't panic too much and just rode it out and then just took their opportunities. Penalty called on Taylor Fisher, so that's her third for the match, so she'll Join Jim Robertson on three, so two players out now for Baradine. And so Emerson Styrus. 
scored the previous goal. No, oh, blocked this time though. Well done by Louise Beaumont. Charlotte Patterson and now for... Oh, Charlotte Patterson, OK, yeah, so number 13, Patterson, my apologies. Well done to Louise Beaumont, had a very good game. And now it will be Venetia Hickey. Now, they find a way through here, oh, a little entry pass, but to nobody. A little bit of wishful thinking, but the intent was there. Didn't quite execute it. Really, just four minutes remain for St Cuthbert's. Yeah, just got to be careful here that, you know, Barra team still just maintain and hold this shape. They want to get too loose? Yeah, they want to keep playing offense. They want to keep. They want to keep searching for goals. Um, you know, six goals in three minutes is going to be a tall order. But they just need to try and, have, you know, play for their year 13s as well, who have their last chance today, and just keep trying to create something. Yeah. Mm, that's good though, isn't it? Just putting that pressure on Holly down again. Been everywhere today for St Cuthbert's in the number six cap. Now that is good, but really, really good, really goalkeeping. good goalkeeping from Olivia Shine. Superb. So Izzy Fenton earlier, Shine now, so they've had a half each. We talk about maybe their final years at school. I do like Venetia Hickey, there's a lovely physical nature about it for Baradine. Oh, good defence that time from Billy Shuler. And they come away with it too. So nice defence. Alice McLaughlin as well involved. Oh, equally too, I'd imagine some cuts. They just want to maintain their shape. Don't park the bus too much. Just continue playing the way they're playing. Oh, I think, you know, time out here um, from some cuts now. You know, I, I, you got to enjoy this, don't you? You know what I mean? Like, you got a six-goal lead now, two and a half minutes to go. You're on your way to a second consecutive national championship. You know, no better way to farewell. There's a lot of teams farewelling year 13 today in secondary school. It's part of secondary school sport, but... I don't think there's any better way to feel mm. well than the, yeah. than the national championship. It's almost the shortest season in school sport, isn't it? You start school in February, and then basically halfway through April, your chosen sport is done for the year. But as we talk about, the unique thing is that club water polo plays a big part in the pathway. And so a lot of these athletes that are playing against each other will come together in the different clubs. And we'll talk about the likes of the Marists and the North Harbours and... Atlantis and but in saying that February school starts but let's not underestimate the amount of work oh no it's absolutely in, I mean, it's a brutal sport October, November, December last yeah. year yeah. you know coaches start planning tomorrow for season 2025 so it's uh, that's the cool thing about it Okay, so two minutes 14 remaining in this final. St Cuthbert's of Auckland defending champions, leading Baradine by nine goals to three. So number three for Baradine, Emily Lydon. Number seven is Alice McLaughlin. Just another little wayward pass, good defence there for Maddie Hayes. And coming well and truly off her line is Olivia Shine. And so St Cuthbert's, who didn't have it all their own way through the first half here, certainly now maybe a bit more experience, maybe just a little bit more size, certainly a very fit team. Yeah, they've been, you know, they've been at a great tournament and they've been, you know, all over the, all over the shop. They're, you know, 
They had a seven or eight goal one in the semi-final last night. They got another big lead here. Here's Holly Dunn again at the centre. Yeah, you sometimes don't you just get that run out of school, don't you? And then, you know, two years' time, you're having to rebuild again and things go back in favour of other schools, but you enjoy it while you can. And for some of these players, it'll be the highest level they play at. For others, well, just a stepping stone to higher honours. Yeah, absolutely. But I think, you know, there's something so cool about playing for your school, you know what I mean? Like, there's not oh, often absolutely. you get that level of pride and, you know, support and community. And so... Um, oh, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful goal. Really good. That is really good from Baradine here. Tallulah to Goldsworthy. Under all sorts of pressure here, just finds a way, gets nice and high. Maddie Hayes did everything she could in defence, but at the end of the day, Tallulah Goldsworthy showing her class, and Baradine pull one back, 9-4. And just over a minute remain. Don't go away because they're talking about this boys final as being a very, very close one. Sacred Heart versus Tauranga. Chance here for St Cuthbert's. Good piece of goalkeeping. From their number 13, Charlotte Patterson. Now looking to just drive forward. Doing a good job, Goldsworthy again. Pushing out to her right is Lucy O'Reilly in the number two. And another big shot, and it goes in too. I think it crossed the line, did it? It did indeed. So, Rian Bryant, 9 5. But too little, too late. Yeah, a little unlucky there, wasn't it, for Olivia Shine? She sort of saw it, just couldn't quite handle it. And now St Cuthbert's, well, they can just run the clock down. And they're looking to just do that through Bianca Pennington. Number six there is Holly Dunn. And 16 seconds remain. Styrus. Bench getting ready to jump into the ball, throw their coaches in. St Cuthbert's 10 seconds away from another national title. They've done it convincingly, have without doubt been the most dominant school in 2024 at a senior girls level. Wonderful program. And just like that, it is all over. St Cuthbert's go back to back. They are New Zealand Secondary Schools girls champion for 2024. A dominant display, winning this one 9-5. Brilliant on offense, brilliant on defense. Congratulations to Izzy Fenton, Isabella Lambie. Bella Knight, Maddie Hayes, Bea Cook, Holly Dunn, Emerson Styrus, Bianca Pennington, Zoe Knight, Katie Marshall, Mia Callagher, Olivia Shine, Holly Gibb, Ben Gardner, and Vic Methvin, the manager. Well, credit to St. Cuffs, you know, what an absolutely epic season for them, you know, to go undefeated, you know, win the Auckland title, the North Island title, and the national title, um, and, and do it all undefeated is really, really impressive. You know, they did this, you know, relatively comfortably in the end today and to show that how strong they've been, this was their closest game by three or four goals of this tournament. You know what I mean? They've been a step ahead of the competition, everyone, and I think no one would disagree with them when I say they're very deserving of their national title. Wonderful job from the coaches. Yeah, Oli Gibb, Ben Gardner, their whole program has done a really good job to keep this team working hard and, and improving constantly throughout this tournament because everyone improves throughout the season. You know, they were the best at the start of the season, but they've continued to lift, continued to lift to make sure they maintain that gap on the competition. Well, it's one thing winning it. It's another thing defending it, but the Cuthbits have done exactly that. They go back to back. They are your New Zealand Secondary School Girls Champion for 2024. We're going to take a break here on for Kata Māori, but don't go away, folks. One of the great senior boys final is about to take place. Tauranga, who have never won it, up against the defending champions out of Auckland's Sacred Heart. Tauranga North Island champions in 224, Sacred Heart national champions in 2023. We're going to have 24 minutes, 20 minutes of hope, 4 minutes of truth. That's up next. Forest should never have been taken off this steep hill country that's eroding, and it makes absolute sense to a forest those hills. What we're doing here is using the exotics to help that process get established. We're looking at a managed transition process 
where those pines are progressively thinned as the native understory establishes. We're trying to do several things here. Soak up carbon, establish native forest, and we're trying to improve biodiversity. You're achieving an awful lot with one program of activity. Thank <laughs> you.